What causes coral bleaching? While corals create habitats used by a diversity of marine life, coral bleaching can put that marine life at risk. Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the planet, yet over 1 billion people are estimated to depend on coral reefs for food. When colorful corals turn pure white, the sudden change is cause for alarm. A bleached coral's white skeleton is fully exposed, making the animal look dead. While bleached corals are still alive, their color loss is a symptom of intense stress, a desperate effort by an immovable animal to survive. What causes coral bleaching? A healthy coral's brownish base color comes from tiny, plant-like critters known as zoosanthellae. While these colorful inhabitants are each less than 1 mm in size, over 1 million zoosanthellae typically live in each square centimeter of coral. Zoosanthellae congregate in the coral's clear polyps where their combined color is visible to the outside world. Yet the zoosanthellae's colors are simply a side effect of their main function to the coral, to provide food. How algae provide corals with food Zoosanthellae are actually tiny pieces of algae. Like plants and other seaweeds, zoosanthellae capture energy from the sun through photosynthesis to produce food. The zoosanthellae capture light using chlorophyll, which is also what gives corals their brown tone. In return for the shelter and carbon dioxide the coral provides, the zoosanthellae share certain nutrients that are hard for the coral to come by on its own. The amount of food a coral receives from its zoosanthellae varies quite a bit, with some coral species lacking these partnerships altogether. For these independent corals, the animal must rely entirely on its polyps to catch food. Like tiny sea anemones, the coral's polyps use sticky tentacles to catch food as it floats by. Some corals use their tentacles during the daytime, but most tropical corals only extend their polyps at night. Corals evolved to partner with zoosanthellae may have a competitive advantage over species with entirely independent feeding strategies. While the amount varies greatly between coral species, corals that work with zoosanthellae can obtain upwards of 90% of their daily nutritional needs directly from their photosynthesizing tenants. Unfortunately, coral bleaching may turn this competitive edge into a catastrophic weakness for these work-sharing corals. Bleached corals lack their zoosanthellae. A bleached coral lacks its colorful, photosynthetic inhabitants, leaving the coral alone with its bare white skeleton and see-through polyps. Without its zoosanthellae, a bleached coral must rely on its own tentacles for food. For corals that are used to providing most of their food for themselves, this may be quite manageable, but for corals that normally have a tight-knit relationship with their zoosanthellae, the loss of these photosynthetic allies not only strips these corals of their competitive advantage, it also puts these photosynthesis-reliant corals in danger. The unfortunate breakup between a coral and its zoosanthella is initiated by the coral landlord when the animal is under intense stress. Most often, this stress comes in the form of abnormally warm water. Other known culprits include drops in seawater's saltiness, nutrient overload, excessive sun exposure, and even unusually cold water. These stressful situations are thought to cause serious damage to the coral's zoosanthellae, preventing the algae from photosynthesizing properly. Normally, the coral digests damaged zoosanthellae as part of the animal's natural maintenance process, but when large swaths of zoosanthellae are damaged all at once, the coral cannot keep up. The buildup of non-functional zoosanthellae can cause damage to the coral itself, leading a coral to forcefully release its algal inhabitants in a desperate attempt at self-preservation. Heat stress is also thought to damage the coral's tissues directly. Under these stressful conditions, coral hosts are known to release apparently healthy zoosanthellae, too. The removal of these healthy, food-producing algae may be an unintentional side effect of heat stress. In addition to damaging the zoosanthellae, heat stress may cause the coral's own tissues to lose their grip on the coral's skeleton, causing the coral to lose its own cells with healthy zoosanthellae inside. In this way, coral bleaching may actually be a symptom of stress instead of just a protective measure. The mechanisms behind coral bleaching are not yet fully understood and may vary depending on the source of the coral's stress. Nevertheless, it is clear that a coral turns pure white when times are tough.